Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Stephanie. I am Tom, and today we're going to be talking about a conspiracy. But、uh, they've kind of made a new word here—a conspiracy that has to do with meat consumption, and we're calling it. Cowspiracy.、Uh, this word is not in common usage, and this is the first time that I've heard of it. But、no. this happens a lot in English. We think、sure. of、uh, two concepts and we kind of put them together, and we create a new word. Whether or not it sticks around is another matter. But、uh, this is kind of the、uh, title of a documentary film. By a person by the name of Kip Anderson, he wants to raise awareness of the damage that meat consumption or meat production is doing to the earth. Oh wow! So we're going to be talking about a conspiracy: people coming together trying to do something evil or something illegal secretly, and trying to、uh, fool other people. But people find out when it's too late, and then the crime's taken place.、Mm. So let's talk about this conspiracy. Is it the greatest threat to the earth? It's a very, very shocking title.、Mm. We're going to go ahead and read day one, and then we'll be back to talk about some of these terms. Kip Anderson has been an environmentalist ever since he saw *An Inconvenient Truth*, a documentary about Al Gore's campaign to raise awareness of environmental issues. After watching this, Anderson began living a greener lifestyle. He rode his bike, took short showers, and recycled everything he could. However, after investigating a UN report about the environmental impact of animal agriculture, He realized he could be doing a whole lot more. His own documentary, Cowspiracy: The Sustainability Secret, tells his story and shows some of the shocking discoveries he made. The UN report claimed that animal agriculture is the biggest contributor to a host of environmental problems, from global warming to animal extinction. Anderson carried out further research into this. And was appalled by what he learned. For example, animal agriculture accounts for 18% of greenhouse gas emissions, compared to the 13% produced by transportation exhaust. When one takes into account all the carbon dioxide produced by livestock and their byproducts, this figure rises to an eye-watering 51%. Water and land use is another troubling matter. Globally, animal agriculture consumes from 34 to 76 trillion gallons of water a year. In the U.S., it is responsible for 80 to 90 percent of all water consumption. A huge amount of water is needed to produce beef, other meats, and dairy products. Similarly, livestock occupies anywhere between 30 and 45 percent of the world's land, and clearing that space involves mass deforestation. And the extinction of many species. To make things even worse, farm chemicals reaching lakes and rivers are causing water pollution. This, combined with overfishing, has resulted in large ocean dead zones. Anderson couldn't believe his eyes when he read all this. He was also left with a disturbing question: Why is nobody making an effort to stop it? Okay, guys, let's get started with cowspiracy, the greatest threat to the earth? Question mark, because we don't know. Remember, cowspiracy, as Tom said, is not a real word. It hasn't entered the dictionary, at least. But just like Chinese words, I know we make up words in the Chinese language too, which are kind of fun. This one has been made up. A conspiracy, though. Let me just say this again: It's when at least two or more people get together and they plot in secret to do something that's evil or unlawful, illegal. So, a cowspiracy is something happening that's、uh, a potential threat to the earth. If something is a threat to the earth, it means there's some sort of intention that someone's going to do something to hurt someone else, or maybe cause a lot of damage. It's a hostile action against somebody else. At least it's a statement to do something. If someone threatens you, they haven't hurt you yet, but they kind of say, "I'm going to hurt you." So this could be a potential threat 
to the earth, perhaps. Now we've got a gentleman named Kip Anderson. I actually know someone whose name is Kip.、Uh, okay. It's kind of unusual. Kip Anderson. He's been an environmentalist ever since he saw Al Gore's. An inconvenient truth, which said, you know, because of global warming,、uh, the world was going to explode by now, but it hasn't. Obviously, if you're an environmentalist, you care about the environment, you care about your planet, you care about the earth, you care about the air, the water, and、uh, it really had a big impact on him when he saw this film. It's called a documentary. A documentary is a type of film that isn't just a story. Someone made up. It's true, or it's based on、uh, real facts, at least. So this was a documentary by Al Gore. He is a politician、uh, from America. He was once the vice president in America, and it was called "An Inconvenient Truth," and it really changed Kip's life. I think you could say this film was made to raise awareness of environmental issues. It says here that it was Al Gore's campaign to raise awareness. A campaign is a word that we use to talk about doing a series of things to achieve a particular purpose. Maybe you're running a campaign to be elected president. So you make a lot of speeches, you、uh, show up at a lot of events, and talk about your goals for the country. Maybe you have a campaign to stop people from eating cookies, and so you make a lot of speeches and tell people why cookies are bad. So it's a series of events to achieve a purpose. And this was Al Gore's campaign.、Uh, I guess he had other events besides producing this film.、Uh -huh. He wanted to raise awareness of environmental issues.、Uh, to raise awareness just means to make people more aware of this thing. Awareness is the state of knowing something exists, that it's real, and that you probably have to. Uh, react to it. Lots of people want to raise awareness of, say,、uh, job discrimination. For example,、uh, he wanted to raise awareness of environmental issues that、uh, we can't just keep、uh, doing what we want. We can't keep、uh, throwing out trash and using water and eating meat and stuff like that.、Uh, these things harm the environment. Now, after watching this film, this documentary, Kip Anderson, he began living a greener lifestyle. We've talked about what that means, and here are some examples. He rode his bike instead of driving his car. He tried to take shorter showers to conserve water, not to waste so much water, and he also recycled everything he could. So he really took it to heart, which means it really made a big impact on him, and he began to be as green as possible. He also started doing a lot more study and research on these things, and he investigated a UN report. UN here stands for. The United Nations. They came up with a report after doing some research about the environmental impact of animal agriculture. When you make an impact or have an impact on somebody or something, it means whatever you're doing is really affecting or influencing somebody else or something. So he saw this report, and he saw that wow. The way that we are raising animals and slaughtering them—slaughter means to kill animals for food—is having a big impact on our Earth. Yeah, impact、uh, a large negative influence on something, or when something crashes it, into something, it can, can also, also be, be positive. So be、hmm. careful with impact; it can be、uh, used negatively or positively, depending on. Uh, the context or the adjectives you use. Absolutely, this is animal agriculture. Agriculture is just raising food for people to eat. If you just say agriculture, you're probably talking about corn or wheat or rice or、Plants. things like that. But if it's animal agriculture, then you're talking about cows and pigs and chickens and, of course, all the food you need to grow to feed them、uh -huh. in order to produce all that meat. And he thought, hmm, I read this report and I realize now that I should be doing a lot. Lot more to help out the environment, and it goes on to say his own documentary, Cowspiracy: The Sustainability Secret, tells his story and shows some of the shocking discoveries he made. So he didn't just write a book; he made his own documentary or documentary film, and he titled it Cowspiracy. 
and the title goes on the sustainability secret. Sustainability just refers to when we can use resources over and over again; they get recycled, and we don't just waste them. Yeah, we don't want to use something to the point where it's no longer. In existence at all, so it's important to think about the sustainability of the things that we use every day, especially right now, guys. We're going to take a short break, listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back to continue. Hi, everyone. My name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第十六单元。这个单元的议题有一点严肃。我们要看到的是一个残酷的真相。好，我们先看标题里面有一个字，可能就会让你有点想一想，这是到底是什么啊？他说 ，cowspiracy， 有这个字吗？这跟今天文章的主题大有关系，因为我们如果再看一遍这个 cow， 当然它是牛，主牛，可是有一个字是 conspiracy。如果从那个字来想这个音，那就知道了，原来它是一个组合字，它是一个 conspiracy， 但是它是跟 cow 有关。那什么是 conspiracy？ C O N S P I R A C Y， conspiracy 就是阴谋。所以说，这跟乳牛有关的阴谋是这个意思吗？我们来想一想，先从内容啊、呃、第一段看起。首先，大家都知道这部电影《不愿意面对的真相》，我们知道这是一部纪录片。今天这个文章的主人公，他就是看了这部片子之后，他成了一个环保主义者。之后呢，他就过着非常环保。的生活，不过最重要的一点是，他后来发现了说有一个跟畜牧业有关的，因为畜牧业竟然会造成环境的影响。哎，这怎么说呢？当然，现在我们知道他有出了一个自己的纪录片《Cowspiracy》，是谈到 The Sustainability Secret。这个字很难，但是我们知道 sustain 这个动词代表的是生命的维持，所以它谈到跟我们人类能不能生存下去有关的不能说的秘密。那这里头有什么惊人的发现呢？我们要往下读，然后才知道。We're gonna take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue to talk about cowspiracy. The greatest threat to the Earth is it, or is a giant volcano the greatest threat, or a big asteroid? Is that the biggest threat, or is a big race war, or a huge? A war of civilizations between the U.S. and China will that be the end of the world? Who knows? Well, I guess Kip Anderson seems to think it has to do with、uh, the consumption of meat and animal agriculture. So let's go on here to the next paragraph. It says the UN report. Remember, he read a United Nations report about the impact of animal agriculture.、Mm-hmm. It claimed that animal agriculture is the biggest contributor to a host of environmental problems. And we've got a range of these problems here, from global warming to animal extinction.、Uh, yes, I've heard that animal agriculture is kind of bad for the earth. It causes all sorts of problems, and there's even a UN report to back that up. He's saying that animal agriculture, or at least the report says,、mm-hmm. that animal agriculture is a big contributor to these problems. A contributor is someone or something that contributes something that. Gives something that causes something to、yeah. happen. Well, he says here that the report claimed if you claim something, you say something's true, but there's not always、uh, evidence or it's not backed up completely. So they claim these things; they're the biggest contributor. You're part of the problem. It's. A contributor to a host of environmental problems. Here, a host of guys just means a variety, a myriad of. This is a word we use to talk about a group of problems. A host of, from global warming to animal extinction. If something goes extinct, it disappears from the planet Earth. I know sometimes either hunters hunt animals too、um, aggressively, and they their numbers are reduced. Or sometimes people overfish, and sometimes some species of fish become 
a small in number, you could say. So, what did Anderson do? He carried out. Further research into this, and was appalled by what he learned. If you carry out something, guys, it just means you do it. You can carry out an experiment here. You can carry out research. So you go and you do that thing. And if you're appalled by something, you're horrified. You're shocked. It's not a good thing.、Uh, I was appalled when I saw how dirty my air conditioner was when I had it cleaned last week. Oh, it was really awful.、Mm, or most of us are appalled when we hear news about someone killing children or something、oh, like that. Oh, that's terrible. And the adjective, of course, is appalling. That was appalling. That news was、yeah. appalling. It was awful. It was horrible. Horrible. I can't believe something like that actually happened. So he was appalled. He was shocked. He was horrified by what he learned. When he carried out his own research. Now let's give you an example here. It says, for example, animal agriculture accounts for 18 percent of greenhouse gas emissions. An emission is when something is emitted, it's produced or let go of.、Uh, you have emissions from your car when you drive your car. Various、uh, poisonous gases are emitted when you drive. You're burning fossil fuels and producing those emissions. 18 percent of the greenhouse gases which make the world warmer. Are actually from animal agriculture. Most people think, oh, it's from cars. You know, it's from pollution from cars. Well, that's only thirteen percent produced by transportation exhaust. Transportation again, cars, vehicles, trucks, boats. Airplanes, etc.,、uh, exhaust is, of course, are the emissions from vehicles. Exhaust. You have to get your exhaust checked、uh, if you're riding a motorcycle or a car. You have to get it to get your exhaust checked to make sure it's okay. If something accounts for something else, it means that's the reason for something. Now, usually, account is used as a noun. We use it a lot in.、Uh, You know, accounting at work. You know, looking at the numbers and stuff. But account for here means it gives an explanation for something. It's the cause for something. So animal agriculture is causing, you could say, eighteen percent of greenhouse gas emissions, compared to the thirteen percent produced by transportation exhaust. When we talk about that. Yucky gas that comes out from our cars and our motorcycles when we ride—that's the exhaust. So transportation is anything you use to go from one place to another: buses, the MRT, your car, lots and lots of scooters that we have on the road. That's part of our transportation system,、uh, how we get from one place to another. And that exhaust, that awful dark. Dirty gas and air that comes from、uh, those vehicles is what the exhaust is, and ew, it makes our air dirty and hard to breathe. It does, and of course we're talking about greenhouse gases there. But if we talk about carbon dioxide, or when one takes into account all the CO2 produced by livestock and their byproducts, well, this figure rises to an eye-watering. Fifty-one percent. So we're taking this into account. We're considering this. We're considering carbon dioxide, CO two. That's、uh, usually the gas that is mentioned when we talk about global warming or climate change or greenhouse gases. Actually, I think methane is the real killer. But this is CO two here. And if we're talking about that, then this figure actually is fifty-one percent, as opposed to only. Eighteen percent, fifty-one is over half there. So yeah, we usually think carbon dioxide comes from cars and trucks. Nope, actually, most of it comes from cow farts. The gas that cows release, which I think is a hilarious conspiracy theory, actually, a byproduct of something is something that is secondary to what you're making. What's a byproduct of making? Let's see, a byproduct of I don't know what is a byproduct that we. Well, I could say、of? a byproduct of、uh, nuclear fission is radiation、uh, that just comes out of that.、Uh, you don't want that thing, but you get it anyway. There are other kinds of byproducts as well when you do chemical.、Uh, Equations or chemical mixing—you、uh, get things that you don't really want as a result. It's just the stuff、uh, when you're doing something that comes out that's kind of the waste part. You don't want it, but it's produced anyway. So, yeah, we're talking about some of these things that、uh, 
are contributing, of course, to global warming. Now we're using this、uh, adjective. I think it's really cute. Our author has used. Eye-watering, fifty-one percent. Usually, you don't use that, but we're using it because some of these exhausts and gases that are byproducts they kind of hurt your eyes. They make your eyes water.、Uh, so let's move on to the next paragraph. Water and land use is another troubling matter globally. Animal agriculture consumes or uses up. From 34 to 76 trillion gallons of water a year, so animals actually require a lot of water if we're raising them、uh, to go to the slaughterhouse. Remember, consume means you use it, you use it up. So you can consume food by eating it. You eat it, it's gone. You can consume gas. You use it, it's gone. You can consume water, and it's gone too. Especially if you don't recycle. Indeed. So again, animal agriculture consumes or uses a large range of water from 34 to 76 trillion gallons of water a year. That is a lot of water. And in the United States, it is responsible for 80 to 90 percent of all water consumption. Consumption is the noun form of the verb to consume. Consumption, and this is a lot of water. And I'm sure all emerging. Economies in the world are saying, "Hey, if the Americans can use that much water, so can we." So I guess the Americans have to set a good example by using less water to produce all that meat. And yes, Americans, I think, eat more meat than pretty much everybody else in the world. Yeah, this sounds like a vegetarian's article. Somebody who wants us to quit eating meat, or at least reduce the amount <laughs>、yeah. of meat. Well, here's a huge amount of water is needed to produce beef, other meats, and dairy products. Now, similarly, livestock、uh, occupies anywhere between thirty and forty-five percent of the world's land. If you occupy a particular space, guys, you're using that space. You're there. So、uh, they use a lot of land to to raise these animals, and that involves mass de- deforestation and extinction of many species. So, if you have to deforest a place, it means you have to cut down the trees. So that leads to the extinction of many animals who need those forests. To live, those are their homes. Exactly, and to make things even worse, even worse than that, farm chemicals reaching lakes and rivers are causing water pollution.、Uh, that's true. They use、uh, insecticides and fertilizer, and all those things、uh, get into the lakes and rivers. And this, combined with overfishing, has resulted in large ocean dead zones. Too much fishing is overfishing, and yet parts of the ocean just don't have any fish anymore. So you can see why Mr. Kip Anderson was appalled. He feels that this report was accurate and true, and his own research was accurate. We don't know, but. If it's true, this is a big deal, and he couldn't believe his eyes. He was also left with the disturbing question: If something's disturbing, it bothers you. Why is nobody making an effort to stop it? Right now, we're going to listen to our Chinese teacher. 我们前面这一段有说到了，哎，这个词的发现，为什么他说是一个秘密？因为呢，可能以前都没有想过，哎，畜牧业，英文叫 animal agriculture， 竟然会影响到我们的环境。那我们来看 Anderson 他所发现的究竟是怎样？首先这边提到，在联合国啊这一份报告里面提到。Animal agriculture, 它竟然是一个很大的原因，是环境问题的最大的原因。我们看到这个字 contributor, the biggest contributor to. 我们知道 contribute 动词，如果后面再加一个 to contribute to something， 就是表示会造成什么。当然，这个地方它换了一个说法，用它的名词 contributor， 所以意思就是是噪音。造成后面这个结果的原因。再来，下面呢，他就提到说 ，Anderson 呢，他其实有去进一步的研究，然后呢，对于他自己发现的很震惊。其中呢，他举例了，他说 ，Animal agriculture accounts for eighteen percent of greenhouse gas emissions。我们看到这个惊人之点，提到的 account for 这个片语，我们先看一下，什么叫 account for。这个常常跟数字讲图表有关系。
那当你说 A accounts for 多少的百分比，就是表示 A 它占了多少百分比。我们知道解释图表要用到一些比较呃相关的动词，这就是一个很好的动词片语。再来还有一个，它后面又继续写哦，拿它来跟另外一个数字。比的话 ，compared to the thirteen percent produced by transportation exhaust， 后半这里用 compared to， 我们知道这也是一个很常见的片语，就是和什么比起来。有时候你会用 compared with， 也可以。这两个片语意思都表示和什么比起来，比较起来。再来就是 thirteen percent 接的那个。Produced, 我们也要看一下，因为 produced 这里很明显它是过去分词，因为我们说这是百分之十三，它是被什么？是从所谓的啊、呃、交通排放的这种气体比起来的话，它造成。就是温室效应，气体排放竟然还比较高哎。好，我们来看看下面他说啊，如果我们把它考虑，考虑到什么呢？哎，考虑到家畜啊，它的副产品啊，排放的这些二氧化碳总量的时候，数字可能会超出你想象到的。百分之五十一。不管我们在谈这个数字的时候，要注意一个片语，就是 take into account。这个片语的意思就是把什么列入考虑。那我们刚刚提到 account 有一个片语是 account for， 那个 account 是当动词哦。这个地方的 take something into account， take into account something， 这个地方的 account 那是名词，但是你可见的这个字很好用。再来。下面一段就提到了，还有另外一个比较令人烦恼的问题，跟水资源以及土地利用有关系。那他说，因为我们知道畜牧业它会消耗很多的水，所以呢，那你生产牛肉啊，生产这些肉乳制品等等，也需要大量的水。所以说，这就是为什么畜牧业影响我们环境的原因。不过，我们来看哦，这里有一个点要注意的。他说，在美国啊 ，it is responsible。For eighty to ninety percent of all water consumption, 说它的水的耗量有这么的高 is responsible for. 我们提到，当你要讲 A 造成 B 什么样的结果，你有很多的片语在英文可以选择。那其中一个就是像这里的 is responsible for 这个片语之外，你当然也可以用。Contributes to 这个动词片语，或者是 lead to， 或者是 result in， 其实它们用法都很接近。OK， 我们今天的解释就到这边结束，我们下次见。Thanks for joining us, guys. This is just day one of our unit called Cowspiracy: The Greatest Threat to the Earth. Come back soon. We'll finish this up when you join us again for English Digest. I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye. Bye.